after neglecting Halo Infinite and apparently now canceling Halo Infinite 2, Halo Studios, formerly 343, has decided that uh, they're just going to move forward with Unreal 5 and not try to figure out how to bring Halo Infinite over. As you can see right here, Halo Infinite 2 was in development before being canceled. It's claimed by an insider. This comes from Insider Gaming. And what we're about to learn here is kind of a kind of a sad situation. Halo Infinite was doing very well. For whatever reason, 343 decided to just abandon it. You know, they, they kept up with making sure that the game didn't crash, but there weren't like these extravagant new updates. There weren't new maps being added constantly. It didn't have the fanfare behind it that uh, Fortnite did or that um, Valorant or that o Overwatch had. It just seemed to really miss the mark on that one after a while. It, again, it just had to deal with a lack of passion. And apparently that transferred through to making Halo Infinite 2 in light of moving over to Unreal Engine 5. So here we have it. 3-4 Industries, now Halo Studios, was working on a Halo sequel to Halo Infinite. According to a new claim, Halo Infinite 2 was in development before it was ultimately cancelled. Rebs Gaming, who has been at the forefront of Halo coverage, says that Halo Infinite 2 was in development on the Slipspace engine that was developed for the first Infinite game. That development, he said, continued until leadership, leadership change in late 2022 where the decision was made to move the franchise to Unreal Engine 5. That led to the cancellation of Halo Infinite 2 on Slipspace. So let me just stop right there. So rather than just, you know, okay, cool, we got this stuff here. Let's see how many assets we can move over. Can we move these skins over? Is anything transferable? If not, we'll just start from scratch and just do over here with Halo Infinite because it's working. Right? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't that be a great selling point for Halo Infinite 2? Rather than just having all the neat things that you can add on to it and neat new guns and warthog skins and you can make yourself look like an anime girl or something, I don't know. But rather than that, it has the Unreal Engine, right? So you and your friends having a great, you know, FPS arena fighting match there. You're competing for a victory royale, right? Uh, the storm is closing, however you want to do it there with the upgrade with Part 2 to make things more... Um, exciting, I guess, more challenging. But uh, no, no, they, they instead just decided to drop it. So here we go. It says 343's creative team spent a few months learning Unreal Engine 5 to prepare for the next project. This lasted until January of 2023 when Microsoft laid off a significant amount of 343 employees, including the entire creative team. Yeah. The whole creative team. You know, again, that includes people that thought it was a really great idea to put out all those rainbow skins. This is also really, you know, these people that didn't participate in growing the game. Didn't push it to its limits, or at least didn't fight hard enough within the company, I guess. I, I The only thing I can say is that the people that were fired from this position, right? I'm not saying that they were right to do it. What I'm saying is, is that Halo Infinite was in the condition it was in was because these people being the team that they were, were not creating the change necessary to keep Halo Infinite the... Uh, really, it was taking the air out of the room when it arrived. So really, to keep it that kind of juggernaut in the uh, market it was in, rested on them. So we'll go on more of what they had to say here. The report also mentioned it's clear, if it's unclear, if the next mainline Halo game is Halo Infinite 2, but in Unreal Engine 5, or if it's a different game altogether. Now, again, we've been assured that at some point we're getting Halo 1. And that's the belief with the showcase that we saw with the Halo, uh, Halo assets being presented in uh, Unreal 5 is that it's the, uh, we weren't seeing a lot of um, beyond the first game, if you will. We weren't seeing a lot of uh, forerunners. You weren't seeing a lot of characters that were uh, expanded beyond this is Master Chief, this is a Covenant Warrior, and, you know, one of the elite, and this is uh, the landscape. This is a Pacific Northwest in space that you're going to be fighting these characters on. So, you know, I'm more in line with it not being Halo Infinite 2 because they abandoned Halo Infinite. I can't imagine them trying to launch a sequel now after they've just been completely... I don't know, numb with the first one. That seems sort of, I don't know, silly. 
I guess. But there again, I mean, they're not making very good decisions these days anyway. So here we go. Um, the report also mentioned that the campaign team uh, that was let go uh, never felt supported by the new leadership at the studio. So wow, aim for them. The campaign team uh, felt trapped in a bubble without studio-wide collaboration and clarity about what was happening at the studio and its plans for the future. It was added that the campaign content was possibly being outsourced with no replacement team being created. Insider Gaming has also reached out to Halo Studios for comment on this report, but they haven't replied back yet on that. So again, like you have to wonder, you know, with the creative team behind Halo Infinite being, you know, sent to the skids and these people like Nick, Nick saying, I honestly don't think I could work on a game that glorifies or fanatizes modern guns being Call of Duty, Battlefield and RB6. I've had moments I've struggled with Halo. But the weapons of the world is pretty sci-fi, which creates a large enough separation from reality. Poor Nick. Poor Nick and all of his special flag emojis. Now, I'm not encouraging you to go out and, and harangue this person. Don't do that. That's what they want. They want you to go out and give them a reason to not explain what's wrong with the game and instead blame you for whatever's going on with the game, okay? So don't. Just come here, laugh with us, have a great time. We stream here as well on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, so feel free to drop in, have a listen. We're going to make fun of this stuff. We're going to laugh at their decisions. We're not going to seek them out to cause problems for them that they're then going to turn back on us as evidence that we're not interested in games and instead want to bother them. I find it funny that Halo a game that is basically the Iraq-Afghanistan war in space, has a guy that's afraid of guns in the creative uh, director's position, okay? The creative designer's position, okay? That's funny to me. That is a, such a bizarre choice. Consider for a minute that you are in a bakery business, right? That you are making cakes and cupcakes for a living, right? You are the cake boss, all right? You got that Cookie Monster cake you're going to make, a cool tower cake, all that neat stuff, right? Real fancy stuff. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you just decide to hire um, dentists. People who do not bake whatsoever. And in fact, had no like educational background in baking at all. And you just hire dentists and you tell them, make cakes now. And what do you know? They, you know... They make dentist cakes, right? They're like sugar-free cakes. They're, sh they're cakes that make sure that kids' teeth don't rot, right? They don't have any, like, uh, friendly frosting on it. It's all that hard stuff. doesn't have any sugar in any butter in it, stuff like that. Might as well be like the plaster you put on a wall there, the, the mason's putty, <laughs> you know? And that's, that's what they do here. That's what they've done. They've, they've brought in dentists into a, into a cake bakery, you know? they Everything... The original Halo creators did not intend for Halo to have this this huge philosophical argument about the world. It didn't they did not intend for Master Chief to be an archetype of motivation, of inspiration. He was intended to be a big green piece of armor that you ran through the enemy at full speed, you know? Full clip, full speed, can't stop, won't stop, you know? That's <laughs> That's the point of Master Chief. That's why he never took his helmet off. That's why he was John, you know, the, the John Smith. You know, I, I know that's not, but it was just John, you know, and that, that was easy to like, you know, you could apply any identity if you wanted to to that, or you could just be like, yep, that's that guy that I'm using to murder those people over there. It's that was it. That That's it. That's it. It's the Iraq-Afghanistan war in space and you're winning. Okay, <laughs> that's that's the game. And for some reason, these folks want to add all this different meaning and, and personal problems to it. Again, like we've got, you know, uh, Pox over here on, uh, on X. It's politics on X. It's at politics on X. Pox reminding us again, here's Melissa Boone of 343 Studios, now Halo uh, Studios. And she's the chief of staff, the master chief of staff, if you will. And... Uh, you know, she says, uh, hi, I'm currently the chief of staff at Halo Studios. 
the stewards of the Halo franchise, my role is to ensure the smooth running of our studio. It includes a little bit of everything. I'm a problem solver, a process builder, a strategic thinker, an executor. Not an executioner, an executor. Again, it's helpful to know the difference because you can get it a little confused when you see how she does her job. An integrator, a communicator, and an advisor. Basically, this is the best job ever for someone with a lot of interest who likes to stay busy and possibly a healthy passion for a military science and possibly having a healthy passion for military science fiction games and lore. And so that's great, you know, like fantastic. But as we understand this person, she actually comes from a background of intense political uh, focus. So she went to school for psychology and particularly socio-political psychology. That's what she went to school for at Columbia. Her focus was on that. In particular, what she was very interested in studying was the effects of systematic racism. And so here you have it here, just before she was uh, upgraded in 23. Now you'll note that date that was after the creative team had been fired. So this person was brought in to take the heat. It's pretty obvious what they've done with her. They brought in a person that you're going to get in trouble if you go out in public saying anything about her because she's got all these defense mechanisms. Like, look, I manage a team of researcher, researchers covering many of Xbox's first-party games, services, and devices. I've worked on a little bit of everything. Keenly invested in research on diversity and inclusive design and efforts to bring more diverse voices into the games industry, Okay. That's not gaming industry, the games industry. That's everything. Who knew Xbox was into all that? But anyway, that's what this person, again, they brought all that up into what they're doing. This is pride flag territory. This is a rainbow fever situation, okay? And that's what you're looking at here. That's what's happening with, this. they got rid of this, this uh, creative team. They brought in Melissa in order to control the narrative. It's harder to critique someone who has all of this going on with them because they're going to put up all these shields like, oh, you don't like me because I support LGBT. You don't like me because I'm an educated person. You don't like me because of my skin color. You don't like me because of how I grew up. You don't like me because I vote differently than you. It won't be about the product being awful. That's what I'm trying to get at. This person is a shield. That's what Melissa was brought in to be. I... I don't have mercy over that because you know what you're doing. You pretty, it's pretty obvious what your job is going to be when you come in behind that kind of a slaughter at work. You know, when like a whole team is just gone from your gigantic studio. Okay. So we, this person's clearly brought in to be like a cushioning mechanism to any criticism that now comes toward the brand as they try to resurrect it in Unreal 5 because Whoopsie, Halo Infinite 2 would have just been too hard. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they were trying to copy uh, Bungie's efforts with Destiny. I'm pretty sure that's what they were aiming to do, is try to create that atmosphere of, it's the same thing, but it's better than the last thing. It's got more things than the last thing had, but it's thingier as well. And that, that's kind of Destiny's hook, is it's the same game, it's just thingier. It's got more things to thing around with, and... That's all really they could have done with Halo Infinite 2, too, you know? But again, they gave up on it, even though it was the most successful thing they'd had since Halo 2, in my opinion. A lot of twos going on here. But again, that, that, that's just me. You'll have to let me know down in the comments below what you think about it. I didn't hate ODST, but I didn't register it as, as successful as Halo 2. That's my opinion. If you're wondering where I come down on Halo, Halo ODST, it's that it, it, it didn't rise as high as, as Halo 2 did for me. I just, I, it felt like it didn't, it, it's a good in-betweener game, I guess, but it just didn't compete. And then Halo 3 was just really more about fighting your friends, in my opinion. I think that's the one that was multiplayer. We were just about fighting your friends with the gravity hammer, just whacking each other around with the gravity hammer. But I digress, guys. This is the situation we find ourselves in today. Hopefully they change their minds about Halo Infinite 2 and bring that back. I wouldn't mind going back and playing again. Maybe you guys come in there and fight me, huh? We'll have a couple matches, see who's better with a sniper rifle at close range. <laughs> Until next time, guys, good luck out there.